welcome to this video, Care Collab video, together with Mary G. Orchids of my little Dendrobium aberrans crossed with Dendrobium polysema. It's little. It is still trying to become a big boy. I don't know why I consider Dendrobium boys more as opposed to the rest I consider my girls, but I do think that Dendrobiums, I don't know, they have such a masculinity about them despite the fact that this one is teeny tiny still. So this Care Collab video is in conjunction with Mary G Orchids. Her video will be linked below as soon as I see it. If it is not right off the bat, her channel will be linked and I shall update the video link to her care video about this orchid. I am in Southern Spain on the Mediterranean coast, 30 minutes from Gibraltar. So I have a temperate climate, temperate to hot, Sometimes it can get cold, in inverted commas, for me. But for this orchid, it can be too cold to be growing outside all year round because my temperatures will drop to a minimum of five degrees that I've experienced living in this area. But the summers do get very hot and I cannot say whether we go to 30 or 40 degrees Celsius, but let's just say very hot. And I have an extremely, extremely dry climate. Granted, the winters, the humidity will be a little bit higher and I do not supplement with a humidifier while my orchids live indoors. But it is the summertime that I struggle with because this cross, where the parents come from, they would prefer 80 to 85% humidity all year round. And I get 25 to 28% humidity for the most part of the year it wouldn't sound like I could be growing this orchid at all. Again, I do not supplement with humidifiers. I do have humidity trays for the indoor growing time of year, which is usually around December through March. But because the humidity is a bit higher, I do not keep those trays filled. Sporadically, they get filled during the summer for the orchids that live inside during the summer, but I don't supplement anything in order to accommodate this orchid and give it the humidity it requires. And you can see what happens when that is the case simply by the leaves. How these are a little bit crinkled and not quite fully developed as for example, this one and this one. It's like they've been a little bit crushed as they were trying to grow. So this is a pseudobulb that grew during the summer of 2020. And this is where I missed the mark on keeping it wet enough. These orchids must never dry out. And especially in my climate, if I cannot provide humidity, it must never dry out. I have it in a setup of classic semi-hydro with small lava rock so that there is a good drainage going on. And if the roots want to go and grow into the reservoir, then they can. And as far as I can see, this little setup is working perfectly for this orchid. I just have to keep up with the watering. So the humidity factor or the lack thereof simply reflects in how the leaves develop. You can see the new growth that started late, late in the season of 2020. This has been developing now and maturing throughout this winter leading into 21. And it's looking marginally better because there is more humidity. I'm saying about 54 to 60% humidity without using the humidity trays in the winter. That is the ambient humidity in my dining room. And it's looking a lot better. There's a little kink in this leaf that I can see but I don't think that's going to be a problem because it's growing quite fast now. They do grow quickly, in my opinion. I've had this orchid since November 2019. So it's been with me one full growing season and I got it as a little seedling with these little bulbs down here. These little guys, just all, everything that you see that is small in the foliage, that is what I got. And bit by bit, the next growth started to be a little bit bigger. And then eventually my little aberrants matured 
becoming a juvenile because I got the little stem and then the bulbous pseudobulb on the top. So becoming a big boy very, very soon. I should expect to see blooms at the end of 2021. In my area, that is about the time that it would bloom, starting November, leading up to January, February, around that time. And it has never bloomed for me. Eventually, I do believe this orchid is now maturing into a blooming size orchid. It looks small because of the aberrant's parentage. The aberrant is a little mini, and the polysema is a larger orchid. The blooms of the aberrants are like a pure white, small, dainty looking little blooms. And the polysema actually look like spectabili blooms or alexandre blooms. The funky, exotic ones with all the spotting and the weird things going on and the petals and sepals and all the striations and markings. So that is the polysema parent and that is a much more bigger orchid than the aberrants is. So they've dwarfed that whole thing down by hybridizing them. I'm quite excited to see what the blooms will look like, see which parent is more dominant. In order to cultivate this one here in southern Spain, I keep it in bright shade, never ever in direct sun. And I say that now while the sun is shining on it directly. For the sake of this video and to get some adequate light going, I've brought it out into direct sun. <laughs> but the sun is so weak, it's not going to be a problem, especially this time of year. But when it lives outside from March through to November, December, it is in bright shade. There is absolutely no sun. It's in south facing orientation and the angle of the sun is so high, it never ever hits this orchid directly. And in the summer, I can be super liberal with regards to watering from above in order to maintain the ambient humidity around it at a reasonable rate. I will never reach 80-85%. I have a terracotta floor underneath where it lives and sometimes that gets sprayed with water as well in order to maintain a little higher humidity on the lower level of my shelves in the outdoors. And that is where this orchid lives. Lower shelf, maintaining humidity by watering down the, the terracotta floor and then keeping it in a shady, shady spot. So the heat factor doesn't affect it, but it could be a cold factor that affects it. It doesn't like to go below 16 degrees Celsius at night. My dining room is normally at 16 degrees Celsius. I do not supplement with a heater either, but recently we have had temperatures of 14 degrees Celsius in my dining room. And yes, so far I see absolutely no signs of stress and I'm very grateful for that, especially because they don't like to get dry. And then in semi-hydro, even though it is lava rock, there is an evaporative cooling on the roots which can be concerning when the temperatures drop because the temperature in the pot is lower than the ambient air. So currently it's living on inside because it is winter and I have it under full blurple lights. They are about 40 centimeters above the surface of the plant and I have the lights running approximately eight, sometimes 10 hours a day. It's doing well. I'm really pleased with it, proud of my little guy. I just saw while turning it, <laughs> another new growth right here. That's cool. It is a vigorous grower. I mean, considering I got it with all the little leaves and I've had it since November 2019, that's not even a year. And all these growths, that's four growths in one year and it's already starting on two more. This is a fun orchid to grow. I love it. I love the little quirkiness of its pseudobulbs. And the fact that it is vigorous, that gives me hope that I will see blooms at the end of 2021. They come from Papua New Guinea. Actually, aberrants only comes from Papua New Guinea. It's the Polysema that has a wide range of islands, Solomon, Bougainvillea, Santa Cruz. And a word I've always wanted to say, Vanuatu. Yes, that comes from Vanuatu, but that is the Polysema. The aberrant is up in Papua New Guinea and not on the islands. 
The one thing I have to mention with regards to this orchid as well, in my environment I have trouble with a certain pest and it is a moth larvae. They lay their eggs on the underside of the leaves and then they start to graze from within. I am very happy to say that all I can see is a damage is on this leaf right here. Everything else seems to now be clean. I have to really watch out for that one specific pest. Otherwise, it is absolutely not a pest magnet. So right now in winter, I am making sure that the reservoir is never empty. As it is in active growth, it is getting 300 parts per million of fertilizer every time I feel that the pot is lighter. If I am in doubt about the pot, I always tip it a little bit to see if there's water coming out. Yep, that's plenty. And then I don't water. If I tip the pot too far and there's not enough water coming out, then I will refill again with fertilized water. Prior to adding fertilized water, I flush it through twice with just plain RO water. But 300 parts per million of fertilizer go in and that is what it has until the reservoir is empty. And then when it is not in active growth, abundant, abundant, abundant RO water goes in because even though it is summer, usually when it's finished growing, then it still shouldn't stay wet. It can be on a little bit more of a drier side, but in my climate, I cannot, cannot let it go dry. As you can see with the mistake on this one growth here last summer, I left it a little bit more on the drier side and then this is what happens. So abundance of water. This little orchid looks small, but it is so robust, it can absolutely handle all that water. And not just handle it, it needs it. So size is not conducive to how much water it can take. This one is a drinker. This is how I care for my Aberans cross with Polysema down here in the Southern Mediterranean. I want to thank Mary G's orchids very, very much for mentioning the fact that she shares this orchid with me. And I look forward to doing more updates on this orchid with her as the season progresses. Please know that if you also grow this orchid and you do videos and would like to join in on this Care Collab initiative, get in touch with either Mary G or myself. My email is always linked in the description. You can also just mention it in the comments. Eventually, I would need your email. And then on further future updates, please feel free to join in and hop on. And then all these videos will be linked together. I have made a playlist of all the Care Collab videos. And if you have any questions regarding this initiative, then I have a video also linked in the description about the goals of 2021 for my channel, what I would like to achieve. This is long term. It is starting off really, really positively. And I'm so grateful to all of you that have reached out. And for that reason, anybody else that sees this at a later stage, it doesn't mean that the time has passed. Any time that you see a video, anywhere and you have the same orchid and it's a care collab please reach out to those creators and see if you can't just join in on any subsequent and future updates i think it would be wonderful to see more and more and more of these videos come out and for that reason the comment section or an email mary g i hope that you have a wonderful day let's see if at the end of this year my little Aberrants and Polysema isn't big enough to give us some blooms. There's a hint of something there, but I'm not holding my breath. Not yet. First of all, let's grow. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Really appreciate it. Please stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye.